everyone, my name is Sean Hudspeth and I'm a professional racing driver with Ferrari. Today we're going to be reviewing the lovely 348 TS and remember to like, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this we're going to be posting regular car reviews and this video is brought to you by East Coast Podiatry, a specialized lower limb clinic in Singapore who are helping me with my right ankle treatment. So to be honest, the 348 never really sort of stuck out in my mind as an iconic Ferrari, but seeing it here in the flesh, especially in this condition, I think it looks absolutely amazing. Even these uh, aftermarket wheels are growing on me, even though I do prefer the originals. I mean, it's got unique styling elements that weren't present in the uh, 328 before and the 355 after, such as the uh, side straight air intakes here. They were obviously present on the iconic Testarossa as well, which I think looks absolutely fantastic. I mean, it almost looks like it's been scratched by Wolverine. Then of course we have the uh, pop-up headlights, which are uh, very very classic and I think they look great when on the move. Um, also the rear tail lights are rectangular which are very similar to the Testarossa and also weren't present in the uh, 328 that came before and the 355 that came after. So a lot of these styling elements really sort of died along with this car. Even the streaks over the rear tail lights they were very very unique to the car as well and they look great but um, the only thing is that you lose about 50% of the rear lighting because uh, the straight sort of block it out. I really like the design of these sort of air grills over the rear of the car and over the engine. You can actually see the engine through them. Obviously it helps with cooling, but on a rainy day, you gotta make sure that the car is parked under shelter. And also if you're washing the car, make sure not to spray the hose directly into here because it'll just go all over the engine. I don't think these are the original exhaust, but they look pretty nice. Also the rear window, you notice that it's curved glass and they don't actually make them anymore. So you gotta be really careful not to break it or damage it because I think it's gonna be really hard to find a replacement nowadays. This was actually the last car designed by uh, Fry Chief Stylist Leonardo Fioravanti at Pininfarina. So this is how you open the door. There's a little button for you to press with your thumb and a little latch here uh, for you to grip, which helps to open the door. And there's actually a little red light on the inside here. And not a lot of people know about this, but this is basically to warn oncoming road users, uh, say if it's dark and you're in a narrow street, that the door is open so they don't crash into you. Smart. So another funny thing about this car is the position of the handbrake. So it's not in the center console to my left, it's actually here on my right. Ferrari realized that it would make it a little bit difficult for people to get in and out. So they designed the handbrake in such a way that now it's actually activated. So if I release it and put it down, now it's off. If I put the handbrake on, it's like this, but it doesn't stay up. You can push it back down again to make it easier for you to get in and out. The only thing is, is that it gets a little bit confusing. Um, you don't really know if it's down or up. Sometimes the handbrake could be activated, but because of the position, you think it's off, and then you just drive off with the handbrake still on. So you know what, since it's a nice day and this is a TS model, I'm just gonna take off the roof. So the thing about releasing the roof, it's a little bit complicated. You need to open up the sun shades first uh, in order to get to the catch. Once you release the catch, if you don't have another person helping you, you need to go around. This isn't the most glamorous thing in the world. You need to open up the other sunshade, then release the other catch. However, this is quite a complicated process. You gotta move the seats forward to make enough space to keep it somewhere. Now you lift, and then the roof comes off like this. Very easily and conveniently. Okay, there's not enough space. By this time, whatever girl you're with, for sure left already. So it's better to prepare beforehand. Okay, I think that should be enough space now. I just realized something. Why didn't I think of that? Now we're ready to go. So the interior is actually really cool. I love the design. I love the simplicity of the steering wheel, plain black, no buttons here. It's very classic. And I love this open gate hatch pattern manual. Yeah, Ferraris aren't offered with them anymore, so it's a really, really special feeling. And this is the first time I've driven Ferrari manual, so it's a pretty uh, special experience for me. There are, however, things about this interior which are a little bit weird and don't make much sense. For example, the cockpit light is actually behind the driver and the passenger, so not here, which makes it a little bit hard to operate, especially if you're driving. The glove compartment is here and the radio is actually uh, concealed by this little flap over here Which means that if you want to operate it or use it, you need to drive with the flap uh, constantly open There's also a separate switch to unlock the doors and then lock them again instead of just the same old switch Maybe they just did that for the symmetry of the buttons. I don't know So one unique thing as well about this car is the engine cover actually when you pop it it opens up automatically So you don't actually need to lift it So I just realized uh, something. With the roof 
here behind the seats. They've had to be pushed forward a bit to make room, which means that I'm sitting close to the wheel, which means that with my 6.2 frame, I can't sit comfortably and I can't drive the car because the wheel is jammed against my legs. So this only means one thing. The roof has to come back on. One hour later. Immediately, I realized that Ferrari owners in the 80s and 90s must have been some of the strongest people in the world. Wow, the steering is so heavy. <laughs> and the clutch is like a, the clutch feels like a rock. So because this is an old car, it has no power steering, which is great when you're driving at speed because you get lots of steering feel. However, it's not so great when you're driving slowly. It really is a bit of a workout driving this thing. So the really strange thing about this gearbox, even though I love the open gate uh, H pattern manuals, is that first gear is where second gear should be and reverse is where first gear should be and so on and so forth. And fifth gear is where sixth gear should be. So it does take a little bit of getting used to. The air conditioning is working, but the only problem is that the windscreen is starting to fog up now. And as soon as you turn the uh, screen fan on, you lose the cold air. <laughs> so then it becomes like a heater. Every now and again, I need to roll down the windows to, uh, to get the thing to not fog up. And this car also has the world's slowest electric windows. You want to see? <laughs> That's just the funniest thing. Oh my god, it takes like a month for the thing to roll down. I do love the feel of this gearbox. I love the long, thin stem, the spherical top of the gear lever. It's very nice. It's just a fun car. And honestly, like the steering is heavy, but it is fun to drive. So the 348 was produced between 1989 and 1995. So the first batch of 348s in 1989 came batch either as the 348 TB for the coupe, uh, so that stands for Transversale Berlinetta, or the 348 TS, which is this one. And the TS stands for Transversale Spider. You can pick up a 348 in Singapore for around 200 to 300,000, which sounds like a lot, but actually for a vintage convertible Ferrari with pop-up headlamps, it's a bargain. This particular one is in very, very good condition. I mean, the paintwork is flawless. The interior is in very good condition. Such a pleasure to finally be able to drive one. Listen to that. This car is so much fun. So, unfortunately, it's hard for me to uh, heal and toe because of my broken ankle. Broken ankle. Now, before we go any further, I just want to say a big thank you to my title sponsor, East Coast Podiatry. They are a specialized clinic in Singapore for incredibly fast and effective treatments. I really wanted to have them as my team podiatrist as they have been keeping me pain-free so that I can perform at my best. When I broke my ankle, they handled my post-op treatment and it was just amazing. This was like the ultimate test. I had to recover from a broken ankle in a matter of weeks, so they were pressed for time, working against the clock. They went all out like a pit crew and they did different types of high intensity treatment just to get me back on track as quickly as possible. After my first surgery, I could race, but I still couldn't run. Nearly five months later, I had a second surgery to remove the metal work which they put in the first time. However, I was still in too much pain to be able to run. Then I flew back to Singapore and after just a few weekly treatments at East Coast Podiatry, I was able to run again for the first time in nearly six months. They really made such a huge difference for me. I have personally recommended my own parents and my friends to go and see them. So if you're looking for a clinic which is absolutely world-class at treating foot, ankle, knee, and general leg issues, East Coast Podiatry is one that you can really depend on. Now back to the car. Oh, it's so much fun. So this open gate H pattern manual actually inspired the design of the new Cancelletto electronic gear selectors that you can find in the new modern Ferraris like the SF90, uh, the Roma, and the 296 GTB. When you open the boot, you notice that there's actually quite a lot of luggage space, uh, especially for a two-seater. 
So another thing that makes this car very special is that it was actually the final V8 developed under the direction of Enzo Ferrari himself before his death. There's definitely a bit of his soul in this car. Is it the most practical car? No, but you don't buy this car to use it as an everyday driver, you know. You buy it to enjoy, to have fun with on the weekends. And in that aspect, it definitely is exactly what you need it to be. And even though this car is over 30 years old, it does actually have ABS, which is a great safety feature, especially in the wet here in Singapore. Okay, with the roof on, maybe the headroom isn't the best, but the good news is, is that if you have a tall torso, but short legs, you can drive with it with the roof off and move the seat more forward. If you're like me with a short torso and long legs, it's better to drive with the roof up. If you have both a tall torso and tall legs, <laughs> then I don't know how you're gonna be able to fit. But uh, that's one of the things that makes this car interesting. So some of the statistics of this car, the 348TB and the 348TS, both had a 3.4 litre V8 producing 300 brake horsepower and 324 newton meters of torque. There's a five-speed manual box. The car weighs around 1,500 kilos, goes onto a max speed of 267 kilometers an hour. The car will also do zero to 100 kilometers an hour in only six seconds, which at the time was considered pretty decent. get the hang of this manual box. So now half the mirror is fogged up and half of it is inside. I'm using only half of the rear mirror. You gotta love old Ferraris. So in late 1993, Ferrari released a 348 GTB and a GTS, which was the Spider. They were sort of improved in terms of performance and engine upgrades and that sort of thing, but the TS and the TB were the OGs. So the 348 does have its own little bit of racing history as well. The 348 CSAI GT competed in the Supercar uh, GT Series with the 348 winning sequential outright titles in 1993 and 1994. Uh, along with three category titles as well, so it made a good racing car. Honestly, the visibility is good as well. I'm not having any trouble with blind spots. Rear view uh, mirror is nice and big. Uh, the rear window is also nice and big, so plenty of visibility. Is this car perfect? No. But do I love it? Absolutely. For all its warts, you can't say that the 348 doesn't have character. Wow, what a great day. I really enjoyed the 348. I uh, hope you guys liked the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. Um, also, make sure to follow me on my social media. I'll be racing once again with Ferrari in 2022. And stay tuned. So the guys have brought me to this uh, famous chicken cutlet wonton mee. I've never had it before. Uh, so this is something new for me, but I'm very excited. Wow. Mmm. Wow, sure.